now we're going to calculate the exact value of the kinetic energy and the potential energy of Hermes when it's performing a trans-Martian injection from low Earth orbit. Trans-Martian injection works the same way we depicted before. When Hermes goes from the lower orbit to higher orbit, lower orbit being the Earth's uh, similar to Earth's, but the higher orbit being similar to those of Mars. So we're just essentially talking about going from low point to high point. Same goes for this. If we inevitably, if we increase, if we increase this apogee more and more by giving more velocity, this is going to be like that, and it's going to escape the bucket of Earth. This is called escape velocity. Um, this is called the Earth escape point. So at this point, the spacecraft is going to be escaping. So at this point, the spacecraft is going to escape this Earth's gravitational field, meaning that it's going to enter the solar, sun's gravitational field solely. But um, as if we increase this velocity high enough that the solar orbit also looks like an elliptical orbit where it intercepts with the Martian gravity, it will successfully perform the trans-Martian in injection maneuver. I know it sounds a little hard, but as soon as you understand, but as soon as you visualize the bucket analogy in your head, it will be significantly easier to understand the whole process. Though this is so, this is how conservation of energy works. And now we're going to calculate the exact kinetic energy plus potential energy of the Hermes spacecraft. To make it a little more interesting, as I said before, we're going to make it an elliptical orbit while Hermes is performing the trans-Martian injection, the Hohmann transfer maneuver. So let's, let's say this is Earth, or Sun, whatever, and Hermes is in this elliptical orbit. The lowest point and the highest point, which is also called an apogee. We're not going to throw too many terms here, so we're just going to label the highest point. Let's label two points. So there's the center of the Earth. We're going to call this distance R1, radius 1. Well, let's just call it radius A because that's a more conventional notation. Radius A. And there's also radius B, which is this distance between the apogee and the center of the Earth. Radius B. The reason why we're not measuring the height will be explained a little later, but essentially measuring the radius of this whole ellipsis is more convenient in the sa for the sake of calculation. Here we're going to say, at this point, the energy is Ea. When the spacecraft is at this point, the energy value is going to be Ea. The energy value here at the apogee is going to be Eb. And the whole, th whole concept of conservation of energy is by saying Ea equals to Eb. Now we're going to calculate that. So how do we do that? Ea equals to kinetic energy plus potential energy. But in this case, it's going to be kinetic energy A plus potential energy A. And Eb is going to be kinetic energy B plus potential energy B. Then what is the value of kinetic energy A? It's very simple, actually. We just, we learned it before. It's 1 over 2 m, mass being the mass of the spacecraft. Um, so we're going to say ms, while ms is the mass of spacecraft. So mass of Hermes. Right? So mass of Hermes times the velocity at VA. So here, this is VA and this is VB plus potential energy at point A equals to 1 over 2 msvb plus potential energy at point B. What is the equation for potential energy? Well, potential energy is not mgh. It is mgh in some sense, but mgh is a formula we can use when an object is on the surface of a, a planet. Because we're assuming when saying mgh, g is a constant, 9.8, but 9.8 will inevitably going to change when you go higher up in the orbit. So as we learned, the formula for potential energy, the universal potential energy, which applies to every situation, not depending on the variability of g, which is not always 9.8 meter per second squared, since if you, again, if you go higher up, that value is going to change. So we explore that potential energy, the universal potential energy is negative g mass 1, mass 2, over R, which is similar to Newton's law of gravitation, which will be covered in grade 12, but it is a little different. But it's a little different from that. It's negative G m1, G m2, or while, while G is a constant, like Avogadro's number in chemistry, 
you just have to know what it is, which is 6.67 plus, sorry, multiplied by 10 to the power, power of 11. This, so this is how you calculate the potential energy of an object in the orbit of a celestial object. Since MGH is only applicable to those to the objects on the surface of a planet. So in this case, in the case of this scenario, what is M1 and M2? So M1, in this case, we're gonna put it as the value of the mass of the Earth. So whether it, it doesn't matter if it's Earth or Sun, it's universal. So don't worry about it because I did explain the Hohmann transfer concept in solar gravitational field, but the same goes for the Earth's gravitational field. So it, it doesn't matter what the celestial object is, just the values are gonna change. The equation is gonna be the same, so I wouldn't worry about it. So GME, whether this is the mass of a celestial, like a sun or the Earth, it's going, we, we, we're gonna multiply it to G, which is again a constant, just like Avogadro's number. And we're gonna multiply this with the mass of the spacecraft, which is MS, because as you can see, it's M1 and M2, ME and MS, the mass of the spacecraft, mass of the Earth. So we're just gonna say, here, mass of planet or sun, but in this case, it's the math mass. Sorry, it's the math. It's the mass of the Earth, right? So simple. GME negative GME times ms over radius, which is r. Now we got the value of the potential energy. We're gonna just plug it in in the equation. So it's going to be something like negative G M E M S over R. But in this case, R is going to be R A since R A here and R B here is, are going to be different. See, see the reason why we got R instead of H because we're going to use this formula instead of the one that involves H, um, which is only, as I said, only applicable when it comes to objects that are directly on the surface of the Earth or a celestial object. So here, negative G M E ms over ra it's going to be very simple we're just going to um, replace this with negative g and m e m s over r b uh, always remember g is a constant it's not going to change so we don't have to label a or b so there you go we got the formula figured out now we just have to plug in the actual numbers to calculate the the potential energy and the kinetic energy and the total amount of energy of the Hermes spacecraft.